word of God comes your way, it is coming with power, precision, deliverance, and healing. All you have to do is to receive God's word by faith as it speaks to you through his servant. You can now relax as I invite God's servant, Bishop Maxwell C. Corey, to preach. I bring you greetings of joy in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for another wonderful new day that our Father in heaven has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. In this episode of the Regeneration R Radio Brokers, I want to bring our way part five of the teachings on the topic the seven judgments of God. Our Bible reading will be from First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 6. I read, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that had so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your glorying is no good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. And again, we look up to you for grace to understand and appreciate all that you want us to know from this portion of the scripture. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone connected to this program. And I say, Lord, thank you for bringing us into this new month, the beginning of the ember months. I cover all my listeners and all their ways and the entirety of their this month with the precious blood of the Lamb of God. I rebuke satanic arrows, satanic strategies and plans against any of my listeners. I decree and declare these works and intentions of the enemy shall not stand. Protect, preserve and perfect all that concern, all that are connected to this program in the name of Jesus. We pray for our state and our country, we ask, Lord, arise in your might and power and bring the devices of the enemy and the agents of destruction to not make these cancers of theirs to become a bundle of failures. And let only your will and your will alone be done in this state and in this federation known as Nigeria. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now Lord speak to us. For we are willing to hear from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As I said before now. I will deliver part 5 of the teachings on the topic. The seven judgments of God. Remember. We have already handled the first of these seven judgments. Which has to do with the judgment of God that is in the past. This second judgment of God is the one I began to teach on last week in this program. And I told us this second judgment is known as the ongoing judgment in the life of a Christian believer. By the grace of God, from next week, I will begin to teach on the future judgments of God, which are really the judgments that people 
know generally as judgments to come. Not everybody do consider the past judgment and this ongoing judgment as part of the seven judgments of God. But from the scriptures, they are. So, by the grace of God, I will make efforts to round off the teachings on this second type of divine judgment, which I delivered one of it last week. This judgment is known as the ongoing judgment in the life of a born-again child of God, which is done on a daily basis and is intended to help the believer, the Christian believer, to examine his day-to-day activities and lifestyle in the light of the Bible in order to prevent the believer from conforming to the worldly standards of living in order to help the believer not to become comfortable with sinful lifestyles. I want you to take note of verse 4 and verse 5 of our text, which is First Corinthians chapter 5. In this verse 4, Apostle Paul pronounced judgment in the life of a member of the church in the city of Corinth who was living in sexual immorality. And Apostle Paul said, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, he was talking to the church there, when you are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, that such a brother should be handed over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that his spirit might be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to get this. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, Apostle Paul exhorted the church at Ephesus to walk worthy of the calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. That it is a calling we have received as children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And by this, when we walk worthy of this calling, we will be able to fulfill God's redemptive purpose in our lives. As children of God, who are called unto holy living, First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 says, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Therefore, as children of God that are called unto a holy lifestyle. There are things we must endeavor to do in order to walk worthy of this calling of God in our lives. Number one, we must put off the old man, which refers to the old, sinful, Adamic nature and all his evil activities. That the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, Verse 22. Also, we must put on the new man, that is the new nature of God, which we receive at the time of new birth. And Bible says this new man or new nature is curated in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 and 25. The Believer's ongoing self-judgment helps the believer to put off the old man and learn to walk in true holiness and God's righteousness. The portion of the scripture we read as our text is one of the examples of a believer's ongoing judgment executed by the Corinthian church against a brother who was living in adultery. Apostle Paul, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, asked the church at Corinth that they should suspend or discipline that member who was answering a born-again child of God 
and at the same time living in sexual impurity. One of the tragedies of modern church is that you have priests, you have reverend gentlemen, bishops, who are aware that their members, at least notable members, are living in sin. They steal, they take bribe, they give bribe, they tell lies. And yet, these men of God keep quiet because if they react towards these members living in sin, that will affect the amount of money that will come in as offerings and tithe. The false grace teachings that encourage born again children of God to be comfortable in sin are actually peddled about by either Bible illiterates or preachers under the spirit of seduction from the pit of hell. Let me tell a story. There was a story about a pastor of a church. The church had a big project to execute. And this pastor had a young man in the church who was very rich. And so one day he called this member and told him he is coming to visit him in his house that the church has some needs. The member said, oh, daddy, you are welcome. You can come over. The pastor went to the house of the young man. And when he knocked, guess who opened the door of the young man? It was one of the young girls in the music department. She was tying a wrapper across her chest. She was the one that opened the door for the pastor. The pastor came in and the pastor saw this young girl. The pastor is aware that this young girl is not married to this young man. And, and all that the pastor did was, God bless you, my daughter. How is brother so, so, so? The young girl said, he is coming. And the young man came out from the bedroom. And the pastor told him the financial need of the church. And the young man said, Daddy, that is no big deal. He went inside and brought the money and gave to the pastor. And the pastor took time to pray for this young man and pray for the young girl in his house, living in sin with him, who is not married to him, and blessed them and took the money and left. I want to say this. When you go to a church where sin is not rebuked, where corrections are not done, then that priest or pastor is interested in your money, not in your eternal destiny. Or that priest or pastor is preaching with another Bible that is not the Bible that you and I are reading and preaching from. The warnings about God's judgment of sin, both in the Old and New Testament, are clear in the Bible. And they are to warn us against living in sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 to 12, I want you to take note of what Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church, warning them not to live in sin or depart from the word of God as some people did in the time past. Paul wrote and said, Now these things, that is the judgment of God upon those who sinned before, we are our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as we are some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day thirty and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and we are destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and we are destroyed of the destroyer. 
Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinks that he stands, take heed, lest he do what? Lest he fall. So here, Apostle Paul, the chief preacher of grace in the New Testament, was warning the brethren in the city of Corinth and said, look, you don't need to answer a born again child of God and you live a life of murmuring, telling lies, immorality, and so on and so forth. And you think it will go where with you? No. God has not changed. God loves sinners, but hates sin. When Jesus carried our sins, God turned his back on him. That for a moment, that was why he shouted at the cross of Calvary, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If the Father did that with the Son, then who are you to think you will be carrying sin and the, the receiving the favorable face of God? Maybe you can be living in sin and still be making money and prospering. In that case, God is giving you Ishmaelite settlement. Ishmaelite settlement is a gift. The blessings you give to some to settle them, but they are not part of the ultimate blessings and covenant. Like it happened with Abraham. He gave gifts to all the children that were born to him outside Isaac and sent them away. But the covenant, the blessing was with Isaac. There are people in the church, they give money. God settles them and makes sure that his word is fulfilled. Give, it shall be given unto you. And they go with that. But they are not part of the kingdom because they, they are not living as people that belong to the kingdom. We are shouting these things not to bring anybody down or criticize anyone, but because it has to do with the eternal state of souls. Anybody that knows what eternity is, and that if you don't preach the truth, if you preach a compromised gospel that may lead some ignorant souls to perish in hellfire forever and ever, and fails to do the right thing is a wicked person. Now, let's get back to it. I'm talking about the ongoing judgment in the life of a believer, which is done regularly on a daily basis in the light of the word of God to protect the believer from conforming to sin or becoming comfortable in sin and miss what God has for him or her at last. These ongoing judgment in the life of a believer are carried out by 30 groups of people. I want to quickly mention them and pray for you. Number one, you as a believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, you are the first person that carries out this judgment. For in Christ Jesus, we have the privilege and honor of self-examination or self-judgment of our lives and activities in the light of the word of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, Let him that thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. So you are the one to take heed that you are doing the right thing, not another person will do it for you. Even in taking of Holy Communion, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, that before you take it, you should examine yourself. To make sure you are worthy to take it. You know this arrangement whereby a church will announce Holy Communion. Both children, adult, those born again, those not born again, any abero that strays into church that day, everybody is to take it. No, it is contrary to the word of God. The communion is meant for those who have entered into covenant of life with God through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just anybody. Just as water baptism is meant for those who have believed on our Lord Jesus Christ. Read your Bible. Mark 16, 16 says, Whosoever that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So you don't just take somebody who has believed nothing and pour water on him 
and said that's baptism is contrary to the Bible. So you and I have the privilege to self-judge, self-examine ourselves. And when we judge ourselves and repent from our failures, we will no longer be judged by God. Rather, we will receive His forgiveness and cleansing. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 to 32, puts it this way. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So you have the privilege to judge yourself, and you will no more be judged. You have the privilege, according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, to confess your sins to God, He will forgive you and wash you with the blood of the Lamb of God. The second group of people that are involved with this judgment is the church, the local assembly where you worship or the brethren around you. When we fail to judge ourselves concerning our weaknesses and failures, God can use the ministry of church leaders, elders, and other brethren to judge and correct us. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, Apostle Paul declared to Timothy that he has judged Hymenius and Alexander. These are brethren. And he said he has delivered them unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. That is a leader in the church, a pastor, executing judgment in the life of believers that we are in sin. Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, which we read before now. Apostle Paul told the church at Corinth that that brother that is living in adultery should be delivered or handed over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit might be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. What that means is that a certain level of protection you enjoy in the spirit realm is lifted and the devil will chastise you and you run back to your father in heaven with your whole heart, and know that that part of sin you were taking should not be the right part you should take to. So the judgment of a believer's sin by church authority or other believers will normally lead to public rebuke. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 20, Apostle Paul told Timothy, them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. So when you have a pastor who does not rebuke Members over their sin, that's a very dangerous sign. When a pastor is only teaching about prosperity, five steps to blessings, seven steps to breakthrough, that is all. That is not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when the church or brethren judge somebody, it can lead to public shame and disfellowship, as seen in First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. It can also lead to physical affliction by Satan, as seen in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20. Finally, the third person that can judge a sinning believer is God. God can judge a believer who is living in sin or in error directly. Such judgment will lead to divine chastisement, as seen in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to verse 7. Also in Revelation chapter 30 verse 19, Jesus Christ declared this by himself, that those he loves, that he will chastise them and rebuke them, that they may repent and walk in the right way. So the believer's self-judgment may be tough or even painful, but the result is always sweet and good. When such a believer humbles himself or herself before God, repents from such a sin and trusts God to live holy, at such a time, the believer can be sure of God's forgiveness. First John 1 John 1.9 The believer will be sure that he or she will partake of God's holiness. Hebrews 12 verse 10 And the believer will be sure of divine exhortation and grace. First Peter 5, 5 to 6 And finally, the believer will be sure of freedom from eternal condemnation which God promised all in Christ who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Romans 8, 1. I want to stop here and continue next week with another judgment. And I plead with you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. If you bear the name of the Lord, depart from iniquity. And if you are not yet born again, why must you perish in hellfire? 
Jesus Christ offers salvation full and free to him. Just invite him. Your sins will be washed away. You will receive the power to be a child of God. Let me pray for you briefly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the power of sin away from all that listen to this message. I ask that your hand rest upon them for good as you perfect your salvation in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Till the same time next week, this is your brother Bishop Maxwell, Jim Nechetam Korea, saying, God bless you.